Did you know that referees don't always make the right call in professional sports? Some people might find this shocking, but it's real. It's natural for mistakes to occasionally occur when there are so many moving parts and so many regulations to remember. Over the years, especially when the passion is at its peak during the playoffs, there have been some completely unacceptable calls. In this video, we'll talk about 10 of the NBA's worst referee decisions. First off, we have Joey Crawford committing a foul Chauncey Billups pushing Damon Jones off the court in the final 30 seconds of Game 7 of the 2005 Eastern Conference Finals resulted in a foul call by referee Joey Crawford. It was evident from the replay that Jones stepped outside the line of scrimmage without any assistance from Billups. The Heat, who were up against the Pistons, received some assistance from an unlikely source as they attempt to stage a late game comeback. Joey Crawford thinks he wants a piece of the action when he body checks Damon Jones out of bounds and then flags Chauncey Billups for the foul. Nice one, Joe. Smooth one, but others saw it. If they didn't immediately, then they must have after a while. Next up, Meta World Peace can't seem to get a break. Meta World Peace may not have the finest reputation in the NBA, but he actually deserved a break in that situation. During the 2012 Western Conference Semifinals Game 5, despite obviously stuffing the ball to stop a fast break layup, Tabo Cephalosha is sent flying to the floor by Meta because of the Thunder Guard's size and strength advantage. Did it earn a foul? Possibly, but it's a laugh to label this a flagrant offense when he was making a play on the ball. After the call that resulted in another technical foul, World Peace used some less than peaceful language, and Kobe joined in with his own technique. Naturally, the Thunder went on to win the match, eliminating the Lakers in the second round of the playoffs for the second consecutive consecutive season. Oh, we remember this one. It's been a while nevertheless. It was an extremely fascinating moment. Now, Kayon Dueling is being hacked by a member of his own team. Kayon Dueling deserves praise for his aggressiveness, lane driving, and hard foul during the 2008 Eastern Conference semifinals. The fact that it was directed at a member of his own team, it was irrelevant that evening. It's hard to tell, but the Pistons bench appeared a little irritated when Dueling's teammate, Marcin Gortat was fouled after dueling collided with him. We are unable to come to terms with the call that was made by a referee who was only 10 feet away from the action. What was the referee even looking at? If anything, it was dueling that deserved the charge of the foul, but clearly the referee had other matters on his mind. What happened was honestly hilarious, but still very, very unfair. This'll be one that'll be remembered for a long time. Moving on, we have the Celtics receiving assistance. 2008 NBA Finals Game 2. There were certainly a lot of sticky fouls in this iconic NBA Finals game, but it made the game more interesting, so who are we to complain? It appeared that many calls were going in favor of Boston, whether it was Ronnie Turioff fouling Leon Powell by blocking his attempt, or Kevin Garnett slapping Pau Gasol on the wrist for the no call. The referee's assistance in Game 2 didn't harm, but the referee's overall superior performance eventually led to the Celtics winning the series. Watching that game truly gives one a good idea about the referee's possible involvement in the game, and it's crazy. What's more, the Heat defeated the Pistons, yet the box score didn't reflect that. In the Eastern Conference Finals of 2006, so many things went wrong in the game that the win was actually surprising. It was obvious the referees were taking the night off when Shaq threw the Pistons to the ground without receiving a call. Dwayne Wade grabbed Chauncey Billups jersey, or Dick Bavetta failed to see Tayshaun Prince take a timeout from two feet away. Despite Miami's and the officials' best efforts, Detroit won the game, but lost the series in the end. Did we mention that Joey Crawford was a member of the crew that evening? Detroit's win was actually phenomenal, because of all the things that were going wrong and literally not much went into their favor throughout the match. That was a win that'll be remembered even though they lost the series. Up next, Nash was fouled by who? Joey Crawford, one of the best in the NBA, reportedly noticed something that no one else on the court did. Crawford penalized the Blazers with a foul midway through the third quarter of a close game for, well, doing something to Steve Nash. Before being told by Crawford to proceed to the free throw line due to a foul by Marcus Camby, Nash starts to walk back down the court. As you can see, Nash is unharmed the entire time, even though Camby and Nash are at least 15 
feet apart when the whistle blows. Oh Joey, why do these things and weird occurrences occur only when he's around? There has to be a connection, right? Players are fouling players that are standing several feet away. Something definitely seems fishy. Let's learn more about Dirk receiving a foul for allowing Wade to elbow him. The Mavericks had their backs against the wall going into Game 6 of the 2006 Finals after losing three straight games to the Heat after winning the first two of the series. To Dallas's credit, they made a valiant effort. Although he finished the game with a costly foul, Dirk Nowitzki had a fantastic game with 29 points and 15 rebounds. After making a significant jump shot, Dirk returned to the field only to get a blocking penalty for receiving an elbow from Dwayne Wade. As you can see, Wade extended his left arm into Nowitzki's chest, resulting in a highly disputed foul. It looked like one that would have hurt as well. Elbow to the chest sure sounds rough. With Wade making the free throws, Miami won the game in their first NBA championship. The foul given to Dirk was totally uncalled for, and that's a popular opinion. Not to mention the phantom foul. 1988 NBA Finals Game 6. In the best of seven series going into this game, the Pistons were up three games to two, with just 27 seconds remaining in the game and a slim lead of 102 to 101 over the Lakers, LA made the obvious decision to turn to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Bill Lambeer was defending Abdul-Jabbar, who hit a hook shot that clanged off the rim but was saved by a foul call on Lambeer, who at the time had five fouls. A difficult call involves the alleged phantom foul. Lambeer was allegedly heading straight up, but some would contend that there was sufficient contact to call. Later in the game, and eventually the championship, Abdul-Jabbar would make both of his free throw attempts to give the Lakers the lead. This was indeed a weird one, one of those situations where one can't really tell what actually happened. How can we forget the Suns vs Spurs Game 3? This is from the 2007 Western Conference Semifinals Game 3. There were many dubious calls made during the entire game. The Spurs and Suns were engaged in a strenuous series and desperate for a chance to go to the NBA Finals. Amare Stoudemire only played 21 minutes in this specific game game due to foul issues. Steve Nash received many hacks, and there were lots of technical fouls due to the appalling calling. Not since the drug period from 1978 to 1986 has the NBA faced a bigger recurring problem than poor officiating. ESPN columnist Bill Simmons remarked after the game. On a less than noteworthy note, Tim Donaghy was the game announcer that evening. This was one crazy match, filled with fouls and interruptions, but still extremely intense. Last but not least, Kings vs Lakers Game 6. The 2002 Western Conference Finals Game 6. The NBA still has a bad name because of this entire game. It's clear who the referees wanted to win that night, based on disgraced ex-referee Tim Donaghy's claims that the NBA were encouraging officials to manipulate particular games. In a showdown of two star-studded powerhouse teams, the Kings led the best of seven series by a score of three games games to two going into the game. Donaghy claimed that the NBA enjoyed the series so much that they sacrificed good officiating to extend it by one more game. In total, the Lakers made 40 free throws compared to the Kings 25, including 27 in the fourth quarter alone. Kobe Bryant elbows Mike Bibby in the face and didn't get called. Shaq was shoving Vlade Divac around and getting flagged for a foul. The infamous Game 6 was one of, if not the worst, officiating games in history. Of course, anything Donaghy says should be taken with a grain of salt. We haven't heard of there being more fouls in a single game other than this one. People watching this live would have surely had a blast. What an absolute nail biter. That's a wrap for this video. Which is the craziest call in your opinion? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.